Hello, this is Ken, your podcast preacher, and I want to welcome you back to Deep Waters. This podcast is brought to you by Applied Strengths Ministry, where we believe working together in our strengths is the effect of working out the will and calling of God in our lives. The title of this message is Supplemental Sex, or It's Not Just Sex. This is a multi-episode series in which this is episode 6 of 7. Now let's get out of the New Testament for a minute and go deep into the good old Old Testament and see what God has to say about sex in those bygone days. And equally important, let's see if they got as sideways as we have today. So now I've invited a portion of another message into this one because it speaks of the power of sex and more importantly of the whole reason why Satan has thoroughly corrupted the original design of it. The message is titled, The message is titled, Who in the Universe is Melchizedek Anyways? And it's worth a look-see if you want to understand the battle that rages outside of the human realm. Genesis 6, 1-4. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be one hundred and twenty years. There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward. When the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Okay, so somebody was naughty and broke the rules. Jude 6. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he is reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Note the use of the word angels and not demons or fallen angels. Second Peter 2.4. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. Obviously, you want to read the whole chapter so you have context. I've just included these parts to make a point. So they saw that the daughters of men were beautiful. What? Even the priests of God were attracted to the beauty of human women, enough so that they sinned against God. But not to worry as Jesus did not neglect nor leave them in prison. 1 Peter 3, 19, 20. By whom also he went, he that is Jesus, and preached to the spirits in prison, who formerly were disobedient, when once the divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight souls, were saved through water. Not yet convinced of the corrupting power of lust and sin, backed by none other than Satan himself, he convinced the priests of God to do that. Now, of course, he had other objectives, as sex was only a means that led to an attempt to stop the birth of Jesus. But not in this message. I will elaborate, as you can go to the source message, as time, good time, has been invested in that message. So if there are just three remaining with me in this journey, then it was worth it. No, actually, if no one remained, it was worth it as I know God called me to do something not to get results, but to do something. So on I go to doing again. Now this next section or story shows again how sex is used to interrupt the plan of God. No, I did not say to stop it, as no one can do that, but to provide God an opportunity to show off, so to speak. Now it may invoke some feelings of disagreement, but if I were you, I would give the whole message a shake before shortchanging yourself. Now I am pulling this next section for my message titled, CD Seedlings. I will provide just a smidgen of a backstory so as to help with context. But in all honesty, you should check out the entire message. So here in Genesis, we have Satan entering into the serpent, who at the time was a sort of beast, not a snake. Otherwise, God wouldn't have cursed it to slide on its belly all the days of his life and seduce Eve to destroy the pure seed. Why tell a snake it has to do what it's already doing? You probably get the point now, right? Genesis 3.14 So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. You see, it wouldn't have been a curse if it was already a snake doing snake things. Nope because it wasn't a snake prior to God saying so. Also of note is the fact that God uses the word beast and not snake. First a beast, then a snake. 
So we know that the serpent was a beast who was able to chat with Eve and eventually was able to convince her to know him. Genesis 3.1 Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Did not God call it a beast comparatively so? If there was no relationship to the beasts, then he could have just said, Then any fish of the sea, or any bird of the air, but then that would have just been random, and God is not random. Yep, Satan seduced Eve by entering the beast and yakking away and then some. Having her consent, he committed adultery with her and her with him. Eve ate the degradation of humanity by intermingling with the seed of Satan, the serpent seed. Let's look. Eve stated in Genesis 3.13 that Satan deceived me and I ate. Deceived is also seduced or beguiled. So in Genesis 3.13, the entire verse states, And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So now if my audience just dropped to one, then we are good, but none is good anyways. Genesis 3.15, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, he being Jesus, and you shall bruise his heel. And God's talking about Satan. So like in the who in the universe is Melchizedek anyway, the CD seed message is much bigger and really chats about the specifics or reasons why Satan did what he did. So I really don't want to chat him up too much right now, but I just wanted to give you a little insight into those messages. Now, but again, we see here in these two stories, how the power of sex, or in other words, the motivation to corrupt something intended to be so beautiful, was used by Satan to try to interrupt the plans of God. So if sex was just about sex and getting women pregnant, then God wouldn't have addressed some apparent issues that, well, must have been going on, because God does not deal in theories and hypotheticals, well, not entirely. So let's look at what God states about bestiality. But first, decom, bestiality. Brutish or beastly character or behavior, beastliness, indulgence and beast-like appetites, instincts and impulses, an instance of beastal character or behavior, sexual relations between a person and an animal, sodomy. The fourth definition hits it on the head, and yes, it was and still is a common practice, though mostly kept in the dark and on some social media sites. Yes, on some social media sites. I have seen the vids pop up, not of my own request, but pop up of human and animal, of kids and animal, yada, yada, yada. So it goes on. In fact, they used to talk about it when I was in high school, that in order to get into a fraternity, you had to mate with a sheep or goat. Now I know no university would condone such things, but teach on it? Hmm, no doubt as they teach on any popular subject that nets cash and that is gross. Surely you see the pun in that. Leviticus 18.23 Nor shall you mate with any animal to defile yourself with it, nor shall any woman stand before an animal to mate with it. It is perversion. Leviticus 20.15 If a man mates with an animal, he shall surely be put to death, and you shall kill the animal. Leviticus 20.16 if a woman approaches any animal and mates with it, you shall kill the woman and the animal. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. Now, I'm not advocating that we should take up our witch hunt stakes and rid the world of this sin. Nope, that would mean that, and it's only my suggestion, that you start with you when dealing with sin. Now, that action would rid the earth of all humanity. No, but God brought it up because it happened. Did not Eve mate with the beast? His seed came from someone. Well, that's it for today. Remember, it's not what you find wrong or disagree with regarding these messages, but what you can take away from it. Together, we can do more to impact the kingdom than if we work alone. Let's flip the script and kill, steal, and destroy the works of the enemy and create space for the light of life to shine through into people's lives. Plant a seed and click on the like and subscribe button. Let's build this ministry together. Thanks and see you next time in deep waters.